Welcome, and I want to introduce Lindsay from Catholic Home Life. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I was so excited. I just happened to be in her area, and actually, just the night before, I just yeah, last up. night. <laughs> I just remembered that I was in her area, and I just messaged her very last minute. Hey, um, are you free tomorrow? <laughs> and. I'm just so And I was. <laughs> I was free. I'm never doing anything, so it was free. <laughs> I'm so grateful that she's having me over in her home and so grateful to make an appearance on Catholic Home Life and so happy to have her on Everyday Catholic. So Everyday Catholic and Catholic Home Life coming together. Yeah, go check each other out. <laughs> so Lindsay showed me this great podcast, Abiding Together, that Ascension Press. Uh, mm -hmm. puts on with sister Miriam James and Heather Kim and Michelle Benzinger and they talked about the new year and how with each new year they like to pick a word that God is really calling them to and I've never done this before and I haven't either <laughs> so I was really excited to do it so you pick a word that God is really speaking to you and a word that you really want to cultivate in your heart it's really cool at the end of the year you can reflect on how that word was cultivated in your life throughout the year so I think that would be really neat yeah so mm -hmm. maybe this will be a new tradition for me to pick a word for the year. I have seen this before, but I just never did it before. I would just kind of reflect on other people's words that they've well, chosen. Well, I think I've seen people do it, and but it wasn't necessarily in a religious way. Yeah. Where I really like mm -hmm. how this is prayerful and like you're really wanting God to inspire your life and yeah. have a theme for your year. Yeah, and I love the Catholic version of anything. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you want to know what my word is for this year, definitely check out Catholic Home Life's channel. Yeah, and... I just interviewed her. It's really good. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely check out her channel to find out my word. And now Lindsay will reveal her word. Mm. So what's your word? <laughs> my word for the year is joy. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Why is this word useful to you? So for those of you who don't know me, I have four kids and I'm pregnant with twins. And just with that, and I homeschool them. So I'm just really busy and occupied. And actually yesterday, it was kind of a hard day because we were just getting back to homeschooling after Christmas break. And it was just kind of a crazy day as it usually is when you're first starting back up with something and my thought was like how am I gonna add two babies to this like how Lord like you gave these children to me so I know it's gonna work out I actually have my t-shirt I wore this on purpose because this is it kind of incorporates my theme so it says embrace the chaos and choose joy I found this shirt from brick house in the city oh. which is a catholic apparel company oh. they have really cool shirts you should go check them out so i found this shirt there and i was like i love that because and this just applies to everyone you have um struggles in your life or sufferings in your life not to say that my children are my sufferings but sometimes they can be they've been really good by the way <laughs> Uh, since I've been here. They're yeah, so they're, I totally believe that all children are blessings. I love my children. But just the stress and the messiness, the chaos that can come with family life. And with any, any cross that you carry, any struggle that you have. But we always have an opportunity to choose joy through that struggle. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I have struggled with in the past where you could just kind of let like something bad happens in your day that you didn't have planned. And then your mm -hmm. mood, you just let it get to you and it affects your facial expression and your demeanor. Mm -hmm. So my goal for this year and what I really think God wants me to do is no matter what happens day to day, that I can be joyful in the moment and um, for my own benefit, for my own holiness, like a holy joy, but also for those around me. So, Aww. yeah. <laughs> so beautiful. So how did you discern this word? So like I said, I have kind of struggled with this, like really letting 
a bad day bring me down. I've been feeling God wanting me to choose joy and really be deliberate about being happy and joyful. And when we talked about picking a word and sharing it on YouTube, I was like going over all these words that I could choose. And then when I remembered the word joy, it just was like, oh, well that's it. I felt like God was like, I've been trying, like this is what I've been trying to get you to focus on is being joyful. I just thought this was a good opportunity to really focus on that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How are you going to cultivate joy in your life? So that's the hard part. <laughs> Practically speaking, how can I accomplish this? So I was thinking like where we receive joy from is from God. We're not promised a happy life in in this world. This mm -hmm. world isn't heaven, but God, he is love. He is joy. He is true joy. So what I'm thinking is that I just need to spend more time reading scripture and the gospels and the good news you know that yeah. we have at our fingertips also especially i want to do that in the morning before the hustle and bustle starts happening yeah. i want to spend time in god's word i read somewhere to drink deeply of of our lord in the morning and have a really good prayer time with him and that that will kind of sustain you throughout the day and make you thirsty for him oh. throughout the day too yeah. but like at least take a real deep drink from our lord in the morning yeah. like in your relationship mm. with him what i read it was like a bird it was an analogy to a bird like a hummingbird i think where you like you drink oh. deeply and then you can flutter around your day and then every once in a while you go and take sips of like prayer from in oh. your relationship with god so anyway that's kind of another thing i saw um, a hummingbird in your backyard oh today. yeah yeah they're so Amazing. beautiful I love hummingbirds. <laughs> so that's one is that I need to spend more time in scripture and just prayer, especially at the beginning of the day. Also, I wanted to share with you, this is a book. I read this book, I think maybe it was either last Christmas or the year before. I can't remember. But she, her name is Chiara Corbella. Patrio, Patrio, oh. is that how you say that? Patrio. Yeah, if she's Spanish. she's from it, Italy. Oh, so then it's Patrillo, like the okay. L. Well, I don't know, <laughs> but she's from Italy, and some of the details are foggy right now. But she was born the same year that I was born, and she oh. got married the same year that I got married. Oh, wow. And she's just very inspiring because she had two children who had complications in her pregnancies with them. And it's very a very sad story. And then she was pregnant a third time and she had health problems, oh. but she postponed any treatment for her baby. And so the baby was fine and survived, but then she ended up dying after the birth. Oh my God. So um, she's kind of like a modern day St. Gianna Mola. But um, but this this book is called, it's her name, and then it says, A Witness to Joy. And when I read this book a couple of years ago, I was just so amazed by these crosses that she carried. But she really chose joy mm -hmm. through it all. So what I want to do is I want to reread this book as part of my, yeah. my mission this year of choosing joy. So I wanted to share this with you in case you hadn't heard about her. Yeah, it's really an amazing her. story. She's not beatified or anything. Like mm -hmm. she's not a saint. But who knows? Maybe someday she yeah. will be. It's just interesting how there's so many parallels between her life and my life. Yeah. And I'm like, why, Lord, this wonderful woman, why did you allow her to have these crosses? crosses. Mm -hmm. And then I'm here across the world with a similar life path, but just different, you know. But it's yeah. like God has a different plan for each person and for their salvation and for yeah. their love in the world and like their mission in the world. She had a specific mission and now here she is beyond, you know, from, from heaven, hopefully. And she's inspiring others to be yeah. joyful. So I'm inspired by her. So she also makes me think of Mother Teresa and uh, our mother Mary in the Consecration to Jesus Through Mary book because they lived in such terrible conditions, but they had such joy because yeah. they just pondered on what God was doing in their life. And mm -hmm. I just 
find that so inspirational just to at the end of every day not only reflect on our sins but to really reflect on our blessings and mm -hmm. we can find such joy in what God is doing in our lives yeah it's like that veggie mm -hmm. tales have you seen Madame Blueberry oh no I haven't <laughs> um, so there's a song in there and they say a thankful heart is a happy heart oh, I love oh, that yes. song because and I always think about that because it's true like your your joy and your thankfulness I think are really tied together yes Definitely. Because if you're not thankful for God's blessings, you're not going to be joyful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or sometimes when something terrible happens to me, you know, like a really, I don't know, bad car maintenance problem or something, mm -hmm. I just reflect on like, wow, I have a car. You know what yes. I mean? <laughs> so that's how I try to flip most mm -hmm. of my sufferings. Like with yeah. infertility, I have all of this time. Like, I have so much time with my husband and I have time to pursue YouTube or whatever else I mm -hmm. want to do. So I just, there's a reason. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Choose joy this year. Choose joy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was one other thing. So read scripture. I want to reread the book about Kiara. And then the other thing I wrote down was just to smile more, which on YouTube, I tend to smile a lot because I'm talking to you, but throughout the day, like, especially when you're just with your immediate family that you're with all the time um, sometimes we just don't smile at each other mm -hmm. and I want to focus on like authentic joy and like being in the moment with these people that God has put in my life and to really find joy in them and yeah. to smile at them and Aww. like to spread love to them you know yeah <laughs> It's crazy because I never would have thought that, you know, about you. Like, I always think that you're like, yeah, <laughs> like, it's all on camera. <laughs> yeah, I'm all big grump at home. No, <laughs> not really. But, you know, it's just like when you're in your home, that's where you're relaxing and mm -hmm. you like, you know, you kind of hang up your coat, you know, you're relaxing. And so for me, that means that I'm not always really cheerful because I'm just relaxed and I'm, yeah. you know, and we can't be smiling all the time because that'd be kind yeah. of crazy. <laughs> I but guess I'm a crazy. You smile all the time. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs>So the last question is, how are you going to share your word, joy, with others? That's the easiest question to answer because I think that joy is totally contagious. And for me, when I am meeting people and, yeah, <laughs> when I'm meeting people, if they are joyful, you just want to be around them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just attractive and it's contagious. And... So I'm hoping that if I'm able to cultivate joy, an authentic joy in my heart, that my children will be more joyful, my husband will be more joyful. It's like a gift to others to be happy and to not be such a downer. Not that I'm, I don't think I'm a downer, really, I don't. You just, but, you just have a lot of kids to take care of. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, just like life can get to you and you can just feel mm -hmm. that burden of like, the constant cleaning or laundry or dishes like whatever it is or disciplining your children or dealing with your children who are not joyful and I shouldn't let their grumpiness affect me or their fighting and bickering affect me that I can be joyful and maybe that'll change our day around and maybe yeah. it will help them to be joyful too. Yeah, I just think that it's contagious, and I'm hoping that that's how I'll be able to share it with everyone around me. Oh, now I can kind of relate a little bit, because I have a niece and nephew that just, they think fighting is, like, natural. Like, yes. they're like, we're siblings, we fight, deal mm -hmm. with it. And I'm like, no, like, I love my brother, like, you yeah. don't have to fight so much. So, I guess I see what you mean. Like, I never thought that my kids would fight fight the way that they do but mm -hmm. they fight all the time oh my god <laughs> and it's just like it really brings you down because you're having to be a referee all day and I'm like I want to be joyful I don't want to yeah. be this referee for my children I want to have fun with my children but it's important that you do need to discipline them and yeah. this is just part of life but I guess that was something that I wasn't totally prepared for in motherhood. Yeah. Like, knowing that I'd have to deal with their social issues and their, like, dealings with each other. 
And yeah. Um, yeah, being the middleman when they're like, Mom, so and so did this. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> Yeah, I guess with kids, it's you never know like how well they're going to get along. Or... Yeah, but God chooses the people in our family, so we're all here for a reason. <laughs> yeah. So this kind of just popped into my head randomly, but um, kind of with the, the last question, how you could share with others. This has been really on my heart, too, of um, spending less time on... Um, my phone or computer or whatever and I think that when we give quality attention to other people that that can give them joy because they feel important and special which the people in our family should be important and special to us and I have a video on my channel about phone addiction and using an app that blocks me from YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and so I have blocked myself from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Oh. I still have this habit of picking up my phone, but then I'm like, well, there's nothing to do on here. <laughs> yeah. And so I set it down again, and it has really helped me because then I can be very intentional about like really focusing on my children who are my first priority. They should be my first priority. And I think that that has helped to create a joyful atmosphere in our home because we are focused on each other and not yeah. on external things. Oh, I love so. that. I just don't have a lot of fun things on my phone. Like That's good. Yeah. So <laughs> my nieces and nephews are like, do you have games on your phone? I'm like, no, nope, no games. Because I like to pick up my phone and like catch up on like text messages, mm -hmm. which is really quick. And then it's like, there's nothing else on my phone. So yeah, put it down. I just got a new phone actually and it has a feature called like nighttime where at 10 o'clock I made it so that it turns black and white at 10 mm -hmm. and it does it does feel a lot more boring at 10 because mm -hmm. I'm like well it's black and white now yeah. so I guess I should go to bed. <laughs> Have a boring phone. Yeah. <laughs> So we hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully it's inspired you to pick a word for your new year and definitely check out Catholic Home Life's channel mm -hmm. so you can see what my word for the year it's is. It's really good. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun uh, meeting each other for the I first know. time. <laughs> and I loved seeing... It was weird opening the door and like, you're <laughs> real, you're a real person. I know. <laughs> and Lindsay is so gracious to have me in her beautiful home and her beautiful family. Her kids are so sweet and adorable. We're glad you could come. Um, and it was just amazing walking in. So picturesque. She's like making pretzels from scratch. So. The kids, they wanted pretzels. Yeah. So I vouch that Catholic home life, you know, is real. Like she really has <laughs> the ideal Catholic home life. Oh, you're so <laughs> So definitely check out her channel and thank you so much for watching. Watching and until next time, bye! bye.